check it. Whether it's your first time or you need a retreat, this is your place for video games and fresh beats. LB and me, LB and me, last benevolence of Kimmy Emmy. These last few years feel like a complete blur. I mean, it, it's as if a lot happened and then at the same time, nothing happened. For me, it was like we entered into the pandemic at the tail end of my 20s and then I woke up just a few weeks later already in my 30s as some old guy with all this gray hair in my head. I guess being under lockdown and at home most of the time made it feel like the pandemic just pickpocketed the last few years from us. Take it. It's worthless to me anyway. For me and Kimmy, almost nothing happened in 2021 outside of me losing my day job, us moving, and TOTE's Kickstarter reaching its goal. And the rest of the events that should have been notable, like NGS's release or Astroverse's first Kickstarter campaign, just seemed so uneventful that it was almost like it never actually happened. Yeah, in the gaming space, there were a few good games that came out, but nothing really seemed all that memorable. Sora was the last character to release for Smash Ultimate, and it seemed like gamers just freaked out about it, like we all just forgot how crappy Kingdom Hearts had become. And then the hype surrounding that even seemed to quietly fizzle out too. It was almost like 2021 was setting the stage for 2022. We were waiting for stuff that was announced last year, and when this year began, it even seemed like life after the pandemic was finally within our grasp. Most of us got vaccinated and then got enough booster shots to raise our stats if this was an RPG, and then Elden Ring dropped like... Kimmy and I got into Babylon's Fall, which was ultimately hated and destroyed by the gaming community because people are retarded. Then something I've never seen before happened when Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was announced to release two months sooner than expected. We all finally got our Steam decks and then the best 3D Sonic game I've played since Sonic Adventure 2 finally came out. Being at home during the pandemic gave us more time to spend together and more personal time to spend with ourselves. I've been playing and trying out a number of games up until now. Some of them because I wanted to beat them and many others that came out because they are just cute. <laughs> of course, I've been playing Animal Crossing so much that I even tease my husband by talking to him like them. But recently, I've taken a break from Animal Crossing and I'm back to playing Stardew Valley because I really want to beat it now. I'm mostly distracted with doing stuff inside because I'm having so much fun fishing and fixing my house up and everything else. I've also been playing Titan Quest mostly by myself because it's so fun. But I got stuck. I think because I've been moving from place to place without leveling up fast enough. I'll need the help from my husband and some friends so I can keep going. My favorites are games that are best played with family and friends like Overcook or For the King. Today we are sharing our top games from 2021 and 2022 with you. We hope you enjoy this list of our recent favorites. Starting off with my number 5 pick is Minecraft Dungeons. Kimmy and I played this with some friends for a while, but to be honest, we didn't really get enough of it. We beat the main story, but there's still a ton of things to do and there's a lot of free content being added to the game. It's really amazing what they've done with it since launch, and what really makes it a game changer is the fact that it has crossplay allowing us to play with almost anyone on almost any modern console. It Takes Two is my number five, and it's amazing, especially for couples. For someone who's just a beginner at playing video games, it's really good because the controls are simple. You're also helping each other to reach goals. The art style is great, making the game look very pretty. 
like some of the ideas they have here, like where you get to play short mini games. It's also longer than some other platformers or adventure games, so it has a good value. I think that playing It Takes Two can make you treasure and remember the love you have with the special someone that you play it with. It's like it's helping you to get to know your partner better as you play, and most of all, you're having fun while playing it. My husband and I play it on our Wednesday streams for some time, and while I admit we haven't finished the game yet, we definitely will be playing it again soon. My number 4 pick is Monster Hunter Rise. What Capcom managed to do with this one graphically and technically on the Nintendo Switch is quite amazing. And while Monster Hunter World is definitely the superior title in terms of story, design, graphics, customization, and world building, Rise definitely improved the combat, making it much more accessible and fast paced. My number four this time is Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town, because it's also a farming game but not a difficult or complicated one. It's just cute. I love this game so much. It's so adorable and it reminds me of Animal Crossing. The difference here is that everyone in it are actual humans. I don't know what's the deal with us girls liking cute stuff and I just can't explain why we love farming games so much. Maybe it's the idea of having your own place and harvesting your own crops? That's just so satisfying. It really can be a stress reliever. It could also be that we like the idea of earning money from our in-game farms, which looks so easy and fun to do. But like my husband always says, why bother if you're already tired from working in the real world? I mean, that makes sense, but that's why I cannot get him to play farming games with me. <laughs> Kimmy and I both picked Wildermyth as our number three. For me, this game is like a Divinity Original Sin light without the exploration, which if it had any, this game would be a complete masterpiece and an easy win on any list. Being able to play a game that's unique like this one is exciting. I like its paper-like art style. The story campaigns that they have are really fun too. I always enjoy playing cooperative RPGs with friends. And this one seems to be the perfect choice because you can have more friends playing together than normal. It's crazy how you can change your character's background story to whatever you want in it to be. You can also create your character's personality too. The enemies are nice looking too and while the game can look and seem childish at first, you will find that you actually have to strategize to win battles. The choices that you make can change the overall story and even stories of the characters you make. It's so detailed, you can even have characters marry or fall in love with each other too. Yeah, the character customization and the way it affects the narrative elements of the game makes for a very satisfying and enjoyable experience. Kimi and I are planning to revisit this game and of course review it at some point. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was easily the second best experience that I've had in the last two years and it has the best original story that I've seen in a JRPG or RPGs in general in at least the last 10 years. That made me sad. What makes it so great isn't just the main story either, but the characters and even the music. It's easy to get attached to the characters in this game. And without spoiling it, the ending of the story brought some questions as to whether the story is truly over. And I'm looking forward to not only playing more, but also getting to play the expansion DLC that's coming out later on. 
My top two is Minecraft Dungeons because it's cute, vibrant, and cozy, but tough enough to make my heart panic. Yes, panic. The biggest reason I like it is that I can play it with my husband. I mostly like to play true games and beat them with my husband because I mostly pre prefer to play as a ranger kind of character or a support one while he's always a melee one. We really work well together and it is fun to play this with friends too. Weapons are not hard to find but it has so much variety making it hard to decide what you want to use at times. I love summoning my bee friends who help me to beat enemies. The story is so adorable too. The enemies are cute even if I know they are bad and the tower is amazing. My top game from the last two years is Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, I am probably biased, but here's the thing. This is the best mainstream Sonic game that I've played since Sonic Adventure 2. The story is better than decent and calls back to pretty much every corner of the game's lore. The gameplay is super on point and fun. The music is amazing as always. And here's the, the real kicker. It's not a short game. People like to get real picky and point out a lot of flaws when it comes to Sonic games, but for me, the biggest problem with the last 10 years of Sonic games is that they've been way too short. It's nice to finally have a meaty and quality Sonic game with lots to do. My number one game for 2021 and 2022 combined is... Tower of Fantasy! <laughs> I was really surprised about this one. This is definitely the best co-op open world RPG right now. So many quests and things to do, so you never get bored. The story of some of the characters are nice and the characters are well designed too. There are always new characters coming out and it seems like they are all interesting. Being able to make your own character and having different outfits is nice too. Honestly, for us not spending money on this game makes it more challenging but very satisfying because this helps us to be more patient while we grind and work to get rewards manually. Finding and collecting everything to unlock what I want makes me feel so accomplished like as if I'm a gaming completionist. <laughs> there are even some tough challenges that I can do myself, even though I'm used to relying on my husband to back me up. There are still more updates coming out for the game, so I'm excited to see what comes next. Yo, this is Last Benevolence. Uh-huh, L, B, and me. Rockin' real sweet. Uh-huh, check it. Uh-huh. You always know when you hear my flow sizzling on beats. Quality is guaranteed when Last Benevolence speaks. Where the time escaped past me, couldn't say if you asked me. But we needed a break real badly, too badly. Had a lot of bad things happen along the way. Money got tight, found out that COVID's here to stay. But we still kept the love, regardless of our days being filled with sun, rain, clear skies, or gray. For example, Astroverse didn't make its goal, but TOTE exceeded our very own expectations. And since then, we've been making crispy creations like we've been cooking bacon in the mix. And I'ma get to fix all its flaws and its bits that we really, really wish were perfected when the game came to exist. We thank y'all for tuning in to our list of hits. The microphone check, one, two, one, two. This is LB and me. What you gon' do right now? We're making this sweet sound for you. A top five, a 2021 and 22. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. This is LB and me. What you gon' do right now? We're making this sweet sound for you. A top five, a 2021 and 22. Top five, 2021.